Okay, so we interviewed Tulsi Gobbard six weeks ago, and she was holding a press conference saying we should not support the rebels in Syria, we should make nice with Assad. And I haven't seen the background on this, but they're saying people are now attacking her. And then I have this other comment from Tammy Stabley saying, the Syrian people do not believe Assad gassed his people. They don't buy it. It's mainstream media hype. This is a false flag operation. You know, and this is part of the the overall distrust that there is out there. You know, the uh, inspectors have not have not really finished, you know, examining the situation. The the argument that the U.S. makes to say that Assad uh, did this strike, uh, did or did you know did this gassing, is that uh, it came from the air, and the only people in the air are. Uh, the Assad Air Force uh, and the Russians and the, and the U.S. obviously, of course, but the rebels don't have planes, in other words. Now, what the rebels say is that there was a, uh, a chemical depot that Assad bombed, not necessarily knowing that it was a chemical de depot or, or maybe did whatever, it bombed it, and, and, and it was the explosion of that depot that led to the, the fatalities. Uh, that I mean, that's that's the story that that they're telling. I haven't looked into it um, close enough to to be able to offer any kind of um, you know serious opinion. We would like to be told the reasons for an act of war and have those reasons be true and know for for a fact that they're true. That would be a first, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a, Gulf of Tonkin was a lie that started the Vietnam War. Uh, the um, Weapons of mass destruction did not exist in Iraq. Uh, so, the, you know, there is a lot of reason uh, for people to be skeptical. And most, this is how all countries launch war. When we, we went to war in 1848 against Mexico, you know, we said that they came across the border and, you know, killed some American soldiers. And it turned out, no, that actually wasn't true. Uh, that, that never happened. They just wanted a war because midterms were coming up. People are concerned about Tulsi. They like Tulsi. One person said Tulsi is our new Bernie. Bernie's a sellout, now Tulsi's the savior. And Karen says, why are Democrats so hard on Tulsi Gabbard? Is it because she's a Bernie supporter? Uh, I don't think that that's why. There are, you know, there are, uh, Keith Ellison's a Bernie supporter, uh, and he has a lot of, he has broad support within the Democratic Party. You know, he, he didn't win the DNC race, but he came within a couple votes of it. Tulsi uh, has not done a terrific job at winning over people, you know, inside the caucus. And with any politician, some of it is the positions that you're taking, and if those are the positions you believe in, good for you. Uh, and some of it is just political skill, and she's and she's come up against uh, some walls that she has not been able to climb over. I think people are uh, awfully skittish about the fact that she, you know, traveled over secretly and met with Assad. And you know they're they're all they're they're nervous about seeing her question uh, the the intelligence that are, are around uh, the the chemical weapons. It, it, it's 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 something that makes people in Washington uh, extraordinarily uncomfortable. Um, they you know they 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 worry that what she is saying you know veers toward support of uh, of a dictator like Assad. Uh, you know, in actual tangible support of them. I mean, that, that's, I think that's probably the best way to sum up where the kind of mainstream view is, and I don't, I don't actually think it has anything to do with, with Bernie. Okay. We have time for one more, maybe? I just want you to clarify, do you think that Assad is responsible, just your gut, right. you know, because you seem to say anything's possible, right. and I just wanted to allow you to be as clear as you want to be. On Assad and the chemical weapons. Whether, yeah, whether exactly what happened. Yeah, so I mean, my 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 gut, which is probably not wor worth much, to, uh, and from talking to people who are in the intelligence community and hearing their explanations for why they think that Assad did this, uh, I I do find it somewhat persuasive that it, that it does appear like Assad had had some uh, motivation to to carry out this attack uh, for some uh, kind of a kind of uh, some political, some some political kind of uh, military propagandistic had some propagandistic value to him. Uh, so the, the the motive may have been there. Uh, you know, the motive certainly certainly was there. The means were there, and the intelligence uh, seems to say that it uh, you know that it was dropped from the air.
which which would link it to Assad. So if I had to put money on it, I would I would put money on that. But uh, but I I haven't read there haven't there haven't been enough uh, inspections or investigations uh, to to know to know clearly. Uh, it, it it really is a case where I would certainly not put it past some of these other groups to have tried something uh, b to to pin it on Assad or the the story of the uh, of of missiles hitting uh, of airstrikes hitting a, a chemical depot is also not terribly implausible. I don't but I but I but I really don't know. Uh, all the facts on the ground, so that that's just kind of a gut take. Okay, there's a lot of talk about a pipeline going through Syria, and that being the reason why Russia has Syria as a client state. Uh, pipelines, pipelines tend to be more secondary, uh, geopolitical uh, kind of uh, consequences rather than drivers uh, of them. And I think uh, a little bit too much credit gets given to. To, to pipelines uh, when it comes to policy and diplomacy. Uh, you know, Russia has many reasons above that uh, in order to want to cozy up to, to Syria. It is in an extraordinarily desirable spot. And also, uh, the way that Iran uh, supplies Hezbollah, which destabilizes Israel, which is a key goal of kind of the anti-Western Western bloc, is is through Syria. So if you if if you lose Syria, Hezbollah gets cut off, and and then you lose Hezbollah as well. And if Iran loses both Syria and Hezbollah, Iran's influence in the region plummets. If Iran's influence in the region region plummets, Russia's influence in the region plummets. So you you kind of don't need to go beyond that. That that's that's kind of enough uh, for somebody like Putin or anybody else who is leading Russia and playing these power games uh, to do. Okay, uh, two more quickly, okay. okay. So, Dean Hawley said, motive, what motive, in response to Assad having a motive to drop... So, th so this, is, this is the argument for why Assad would have done it. It would be to say, okay, you guys think that you're going to wear me down and that I'm going to come to some negotiated solution with these collected rebel groups that are uh, meeting in hotels with diplomats and, and working towards some type of resolution. He's like, well, guess what? There's nothing holding me back. I'm going to annihilate you, and, and I can do whatever I want because Donald Trump is in the White House, and he's a friend of Vladimir Putin, who is, who is my ally, and here's how I'm going to prove to you that I can do whatever I want. Boom. Like, that's the, that's the story that would be told of what, what Assad's motivation to, to launch an attack like this would be, to say, I can do this. I, I heard on NPR one of the experts they interviewed was saying that Assad wanted to drive a wedge between Putin and Trump. That do, that to me doesn't necessarily make sense. Um, you know, he he benefits by having uh, Trump and Trump and Putin, you know, together. Uh, and so, you know, it, it would be a miscalculation from my perspective if he if that's what he was trying to do. Okay, Kim Hightower says, wasn't the 2013 chemical weapons attack debunked as not Assad doing it? Uh, I mean, there are still people that don't believe that he did it. Most people, um, mo you know, most people who've looked at it feel like it was, it was Assad. Uh, but it's, it's a region with so many, you know, bad competing actors that it really is hard to know for sure. But no, it was, it was never conclusively debunked. But there are certainly people that question it. Who killed more people people last year, the United States or Syria, or, or Assad? Uh, let's see, the Syrian government. Yeah. Or the United States government. Uh, we could probably figure that out, but I I would I would assume it would be the United States government. Really? I, yeah, wow. if I had to guess. And how is that? Where where, I mean, where are the numbers record? I mean, we've just we've just dropped so many thousands of tons of bombs on uh, Yemen and Syria and Iraq that. You know, they've taken out an awful lot of people.